Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to refine and modify your motion capture animations in Cartoon Animator 4. And now in this tutorial we're using the Perception Neuron device, Perception Neuron Studio, uh, but you can actually uh, follow these techniques using uh, any, any hardware you want. Um, so first on the screen we have this uh, character doing a uh, push-up here in Perception Neuron. Uh, nothing wrong with it uh, in, in Perception Neuron here, it looks fine and dandy. But uh, once we take it into Cartoon Animator 4, you can see that there's a little bit of issue. Um, a couple issues with the sliding of the feet and the hands, and the hands are in a weird, uh, different position there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the Motion Key Editor. I'm going to show you how to uh, fix this. So we'll go over here to the left to the 2D Motion Key Editor. Again, you can always use the uh, Hot Key, uh, the K Hot Key as well. And I'll go down to the uh, feet. Let's take a look at the, uh, the uh, solving the feet issue first. So again, if we uh, play back, you can see just slide through the timeline, you can see the feet are kind of moving around. Um, also, it looks a little bit weird uh, that she's on her toes. Generally, when you're doing a push-up, you're kind of on the balls of your feet there. So what I'm going to do is uh, open up the uh, timeline by pressing the F3 hotkey. You can also go down here and open up the timeline. And uh, we're going to just open up the uh, motion track here. You can see there's our motion clip. And the, f the first thing I'm going to do is at frame one here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my feet, the second uh, toe uh, bone there. We're going to go ahead and make sure we show the bones here uh, in the bone display so we can see which bone we're talking about here. That blue one right there, we'll just kind of move it over this way and just disregard the fact that she's doing push-ups in high heels. Probably not the most recommended uh, footwear for, uh, for exercise. We'll take the uh, bone of the uh, right foot there and do the same thing. So just take it like this. Zoop, right there and uh, send it down over here. All right. And then what I want to do is at this frame, I want to lock these, uh, both the feet here. Okay, so I want to press uh, the lock button over here and the lock button over here. And the final thing I want to do, I'm going to just expand the timeline a little bit by clicking and dragging over here. I'm going to click and drag on the, uh, the toe sprites here. Just uh, click and drag these two here and copy them uh, from frame one here. Right click and copy and take them to the very end of my clip here and paste them over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and paste. And there you go. So now when we have uh, our character doing the push-ups, if we play back, pressing the space key, you can see those feet will be put in place. Again, the high heels are a bit weird, but uh, you can just disregard that uh, for now. Let's take a look at the uh, character's hands here. So the hands are still going to be moving around and flailing in a, in a weird way, and obviously not a good looking push up there. Um, in this case, what I'm gonna do, since we have so many bones in the hands, I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, um, disable the bones here, not show them, just hide them. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my uh, my right left hand here, rather, uh, select the left hand. We're gonna go up here to the uh, hand uh, editing, hand pose editor. And I'm just gonna choose a preset hand for this uh, left hand here, since it's gonna look a little bit weird um, if it's reaching out like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the reach um, preset here. We'll use this scoop A. Looks fine to me. And then what I want to do is I can just rotate it around like that. And there you go. It looks a little bit better. Like she's actually kind of doing some uh, hand push-ups there. We'll uh, close down the hand pose editor there. You can also take the, uh, make sure you take the left hand nub and kind of move that as well. And we'll do the same thing for the right hand. Just kind of position it slightly. And right hand nub there. Maybe just move it uh, slightly up here. And then what I want to do is I want to, uh, again, same thing, just lock both of those. And you can see once we lock them, the line appears on, on the nub uh, transform track there to ensure that it, it is uh, locked in position there. And I'm going to go ahead and copy all of those four keyframes for both the fingers and for the uh, nubs there. So uh, we can just go ahead and control select all these. We'll select the uh, left hand, uh, right hand, control select again. Um, left hand nub, right hand nub, and fingers, that really doesn't really matter, but uh, we'll just go ahead and copy those as well. Right click and copy, and then we will paste them all over at the last frame here. Doesn't matter where we select, uh, we need to go ahead down here and uh, right click and paste. You can see all those um, keyframes will be uh, transform or transformed, uh, copied over to there. And then if we play back, you can see our hands will be in the correct position. Everything looking fine and dandy. All right, so that's really how you can uh, fix your uh, character to get the, the push-up you want. If we close down the 2D motion key editor, we can see the, the whole thing there. And it's a uh, beauty. Okay, now she has a little bit of a better technique with her, uh, her push-ups there than she did before. 
Okay, so for our next example here, we have this uh, gesture motion, like this welcoming motion. Uh, our character is just kind of saying, welcome to the motion capture tutorial. And uh, what we're going to do here is you can see if we play this back in Cartoon Animator 4, there's a little bit of an issue with the character's right hand. You can see it kind of um, jitters back and forth there. And that, that kind of happens sometimes when you're transferring a 3D motion onto a 2D character. You may encounter certain glitches like that. So to fix that, we're going to talk about sampling the motion clip and, and adjusting the individual keyframes. So I'm going to press F3 and go into our timeline here. And uh, if we scrub through, you can see most of the clipping happens between like frame 30 and frame 50 there. Okay, so it kind of flaps back and forth. So what we're going to do is we have that motion clip for our character. I'm going to right click that and you have the option to sample the motion clip. Now there's three different ways you can sample. You can sample all parts, optimize keys and selected parts. If I select all parts here, um, just go ahead and press OK. You can see basically it um, samples every single keyframe, uh, every single part on our character. Uh, if we go to, like under motion, you can see uh, right forearm, left forearm. Um, for example, it'll sample all of those, each individual keyframes uh, on, e on every, every uh, frame there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control Z that and we're going to do that. And I'm going to try and right click and this time select optimized uh, keys. So optimized keys makes it a little bit easier. It uh, just uh, generates less keyframes. Um, just uses a technique here too. You can see there's less keyframes um, for, our, for our character here. Um, just makes it a little bit easier. But uh, since for, th for this particular situation, we're only modifying the right uh, hand there, we only actually need one part, which is the right hand and the right forearm. So I'm going to just control Z one more time and undo that. And then this time we're going to sample, we're going to sample using selected parts. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and press uh, right click on, uh, rather click on the right hand and the uh, right arm. Okay. So just these two and sample those. Okay. So now you can see it adds the, uh, it's automatically optimized. You can see the right forearm. It'll show there. We can close down the left forearm. We don't need that. We don't need layer. We don't need sprite. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, load up our right arm here, uh, rather the right, uh, yeah, right arm here. And uh, you can see the keyframes right there. So now we have keyframes in the right arm and the right uh, forearm tr uh, tracks, but all we really need to do is modify the transform track itself since um, all the keyframes in the transform track are overall keyframes. And we only need to really modify those ones. Uh, and it'll modify both the right forearm and the right arm. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click and drag from about frame 30 to about frame 50 or so and just uh, delete all those keyframes. You can see it deletes them for both of those tracks as well. And now what we have is we have this. So it's smooth already, but we want to kind of try to uh, match it to the uh, to the left arm there. Okay. So from here, let's just um, open up our 2D motion key editor. And I'm going to select my character's uh, right uh, forearm here. And we'll just kind of move it uh, slightly just to create a keyframe there, starting keyframe. And maybe about uh, here. So I'll just try this. And then at about here, that's where we want the hand to be, obviously, in this position over here. Just like that. You can take the uh, um, this position right here. So now we have it like this. And uh, you can even maybe move it a little bit forward if you want. Um, just like that. Okay. And yeah, then basically problem is fixed. All right. So we don't have to worry too much about anything else. Just uh, resolve that issue by uh, deleting a couple of keyframes and adding a few more. And that's really about all there is to it. Okay. So he has that nice welcome gesture motion. Now, if we want, we can also uh, flatten the uh, clip. Uh, since we have all these keyframe edits we've made, what I can do next is I'm going to flatten the clip. And that's going to just bake all of these uh, keyframes into my clip. So if I select my clip, I can right click it and go uh, flatten motion clip. That's going to remove all the keyframes. They're going to be baked into the uh, clip there. And if we play back, there you go. All right. So uh, that's basically all there is to it. And if I want to uh, save that motion uh, and, you know, apply it to a different character, uh, very easy to do as well. I can just simply right click on the motion clip and select export. And uh, we'll just call this a uh, welcome motion. Okay, save that, and then uh, and then we'll go over to our animation tab, and under the uh, custom tab, under motion, we should be able to find a welcome motion. There it is right there. 
Um, so let's go ahead and bring in a different character. Um, let's go down to character uh, G3360 human. Let's bring in um, Roger. Roger front facing. This is a front facing motion. So again, recommended you um, bring in the same motion for the same profile of character. All right, there he is. Let's go back to that animation there under custom. We'll find this welcome motion and simply click and drag and apply it to Roger. Okay. There you go. All right, the exact same motion. Everything looks fine and dandy. All right, so that's really about all there is to it. Um, just a couple little quick tips on how to uh, modify, refine, and edit your motion capture animations in Cartoon Animator 4. Uh, hopefully you learned a lot in this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and our learning center for more tutorials. And I hope to see you in the next video.